You are listening to the Firecracker Podcast with Tony Rico. All right. Well, hello, sports fans, softball specific sports fans. We've got the boys in with us tonight. Yeah. The boys, Vic and Tony, right? And I, I just was mistaken because I felt like we've done this. We've had so many conversations and then we've had so many Zoom calls in the last year or so that I figured we did this already. But now it's my first, first one. one in person, live in the new studio. So podcast number two in the new APC Alliance Performance Center Firecracker Softball Incorporated <laughs> podcast studio. So but, say that ten times. Yeah, they, they <laughs> can get to it once. But welcome, you guys. Like, thanks, thanks for coming. And uh, thanks for I know us. that I've mentioned this before, and, <clears throat> and probably ten thousand years ago, we were all family. I guess I don't know. Well, come, kind of come sure. from the same thing or something like that. It's not can't say the same island, but you know. But man, just wanted to catch up with you guys because uh, it's been how long? You've been in the organization since that, September. I mean, shoot, shoot, just just starting, but it feels like we've done this so long. I don't know. To me, it does. It feels like, it feels like I've known feels you great. well. It feels like yeah. So when things are flowing. So, Time but flies. You, you know, you and I, we've had conversations in the past, and you know, we talk a little bit about you know our conversations and the relationship wasn't based on being a firecracker, wasn't based on business, wasn't based on money, wasn't based on any of that stuff. What, you know, we understand the perception that people might have of me. I'll, I'll throw you guys in there a little bit too, because because of that that persona and the strength of your brand. And I think that's something that I really want to share with people is because we've talked about this. I believe that there are a lot of people in softball that would love to do what you're doing the way you do it. Right. And even, you know, Vic, I mean, it's, it's, it needs to be common knowledge that for every success story, there's people behind the success, right? And so from my perspective of what you've been able to do to provide the admin support and different things that you do for Tony, because I look at it like um, performers and entertainers. If you're able to just play the guitar, you're able to do what you do that makes people feel good and you don't have to weigh yourself down with a lot of those things that need to happen or else the show doesn't go on, right? But it allows you to stay in that pocket, right? I mean, obviously, if if I had to hook these microphones up, we wouldn't be having anything or anything like that. So so I'm just really appreciative that it came together and that the the Medina umbrella joined the, the, the Firecracker organization. And But the reason I'm happy is not so much for my own personal benefit. It's because you brought in another story of happiness, another layer, another level. You know, we've already had Sean Bashir build his brand inside this organization. And it's something that I want most for people inside the organization. Personal brands with players, um, umbrella uh, brands with, with coaches. And, you know, heck, if it leads to another organization, doesn't matter. We're all just trying to help each other out. But thanks for being here, guys. And so, I mean, so far, so good. Been here since September, so yes, yeah. I'm having a blast. I, I, you know, coming in here, I, you know, I've talked to Sean in the past, and and Dougie, and I think it was Dougie uh, early last year that had uh, mentioned something about he you might want to talk to uh, Tony Rico. Uh, I think this is uh, it may be a good fit for you. Yeah. So Doug uh, Myers, legendary coach, oh, awesome has, has has all the accolades, but you would never know it because he doesn't really talk about it, right? And so, but. Love One of Doug. the greatest guys around, right? Yeah. So anyways, um, yeah, I talked to Dougie a little bit and then got in touch with you. And, and uh, I talked to Vic because Vic's my right-hand man and been with Vic for a few years coaching together at a Norwalk. So where, where'd you guys meet? Huh, it's an interesting story. Dating service or like, well, I don't know. Like, no, the... we got connected. Uh, another rec ball coach uh, back when my daughter was playing 10U. Um, before, you know, in December, we connected and he was like, hey, let's get a team together in the summer. I got Had it. you seen any of his work? I, I didn't like, know Tony nothing. at all. all I, right. I knew nothing about Tony. He's like, hey, and I got a guy that's going to help us out. I said, okay. So in between uh, December and the summer, we've been talking with, with this other rec ball coach. And he's like, hey, I want you to meet Tony Medina. Come come out to a practice and check him out. He, he works with our team. Mm-hmm. I was like, ah, oh, that's the secret sauce you guys have. Mm-hmm. Because this league was, was very good, mm-hmm. and their energy was just amazing. I was always wondering why, and, and not nothing against the coach, but I was like, it's not coming from him. Right, right. <laughs> so, it was a practice or a clinic? A practice. Practice, right. A practice. So uh, instantly noticeable. Yeah, instantly noticeable. So then we, uh, we put this team together, and in 10 years, it was amazing. I mean, it, it was, uh, you know, all about the energy. Right. We, we just felt this spark of energy. And, you know, with my daughter going to his clinics, you know, two or three times a week, uh, we just latched on. And uh, there, there was something there was, a, it was an instant click with Tony. And Do myself. you remember Lay's response after her first class? 
her first response was, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. And she was looking at all the other girls. When, before she did the class. Yes. Right? Yes. How about after she took the class and got the car? After she took the class, she was like, when are we coming back? When are we coming back? And she's like, you know, yeah, he's kind of loud. He yells at us. <laughs> but he also jokes around. And I like that guy. Bottom line. Instant. Right? With the, Bottom line. The very first day. And I said, oh, we'll, we'll try to come back. And, you know, we'll make it happen. He does it every week. Um, and after that, it was just like, it was routine. Right. She didn't, I mean. It became part of her life. It became part of her life. And, you know, the days we didn't go, it, it, she was so upset. I was like, why aren't we going? I need right. to be there. Right. You know, you know, I want to see Tony. I want to see the, you know, she, she made a connection with all the other girls from different cities that she never knew, but she knew that every week she was going to see uh, this girl from Torrance, this girl from Redondo, this girl from, you know, it, it was an instant connection Experience. where she had new friends and a new coach that she loved. So we, you knew that, you knew that there was some good teaching taking place, right? There's yeah. some good, but that wasn't it for her. I, I don't think she knew that. Right. She didn't know. And that again, and I bring it. that up because again, uh, I don't know. I always add a couple of listeners every time we do something. So we might be up to fifteen now, sixteen uh, people watching this. <laughs> but for any coaches that are watching this, that are, are are trying to get somewhere, right? Because that's we're talking about people treading water in the softball waters, right? Trying to get somewhere, trying to get somewhere as a coach, trying to get your team somewhere. But I want coaches to hear that, right? Because you, you think that this is what's going to get people to your team, uh, your accolades, your winning, whatever it is. But I want them to hear what really goes into the secret sauce because that's, it's a very powerful draw. And I do believe that it's available for everyone in their own way. No one can reproduce what you're doing the way you do it, but they can do it their own way. And I think that's one of the takeaways that I want people to get from this. So uh, Tony, what was, what do you remember first impression with Vic and, and how'd you single him out to be a guy that was going to be able to help you out someday? Or did that take a little time? <laughs> well, Vic was kind of quiet and, and um, he just, he's a guy that kind of sits back and just watches and his daughter, uh, Leilani, is uh, man. She's like my. She's like a daughter to me too. I mean, it, it, the relationship is just there. It's it's taken some time, and we've just uh, you know just built this friendship uh, relationship. That's it's awesome, and to this day, it's it's it, it's just getting better and bigger and stronger. Mm-hmm. Um, but I remember you know this team and and, and just uh, the fun that we had. And Vic was uh, one of the coaches and. Uh, he used to come out and help me at my clinics, and he still does, and so does Leilani. To this day, she comes out, and the kids love her. Uh, but it's just one of those things that's hard to explain. You know, you, you, you watch different coaches, um, and, and one of my favorite instructors was Robert Young. I think we talked about him uh, a while one of back. favorite people in the whole world. Yeah, Robert's awesome. And, and George, and I, and I used to watch George these guys. Yep. And just how they used to run their clinics, and a lot of fun. And I just really appreciated what they would do for these kids, and I just wanted to kind of – Add my own value. I used to do this a lot in baseball, not to this extent, but uh, get out there and do the drills and just have a lot of fun, put the music on. And uh, so it, it just kind of grew into, you know, little by little, just more kids coming out and having fun. And Vic was out there helping me. And um, so you really started doing your defensive classes when? God, what, what, probably about at least 15 years ago. Okay. And maybe the last uh, six, seven years ago, they just started really growing. People started, we started putting these videos together on YouTube and, and it was just to have fun, kind of showcase our younger players having fun, kind of what we do. And, uh, and people all over the country, all over the world kind of started, you know, uh, uh, chiming in and loved watching what we were doing. And, it, you know, Vic's been a big part of that. I know Jill Allen and Vic helped me with my social media a lot. Mm-hmm. And it's just gotten to a point right now where, uh, man, it's just growing and growing, and you know we're we're just kind of building on top of what so we're doing right now. So how does it feel? I would imagine it could be a little uncomfortable if I tell you, arguably the strongest instructional brand in America. But then, how would you not go outside of uh, United States, right? Because you can even say globally, but arguably, right now, and I say arguably because people in softball can argue about anything, right? <laughs> so that everyone's always going to have a different opinion. But arguably, the strongest instructional brand in the world right now. I don't know about that. I, I, I know I knew I you'd be Canada. uncomfortable with that. I, I, w- I went to Canada a few years ago, and, it, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, y- you know, as a matter of fact, uh, I got a. I was talking to Holly Kitchen. She has a 16U team. Uh, I just talked to her a couple of weeks ago, and, and she wants to come back out here. Obviously, COVID uh, and everything, she wasn't able, able to come out last year. Uh, but we did have a camp when she came down a couple of years ago, and that was a lot of fun. We still keep in contact. We had... 
shirts made. We, the, the players, uh, they had a little doubleheader after that. We had uh, even Hollywood was the little uh, bat buster gr- mm-hmm. or uh, uh, bat girl at that time. And they still keep in touch on our Instagram. Mm-hmm. So it's just a lot of fun doing stuff like that. And just the fact that, you know, Canada um, wants to come down and do a camp out here together again is, is pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, that, that's a great relationship to have with them too. We uh, we've uh, often attended the Canadian fast pitch tournaments and the the Canada Cups up there, and just great people. We've always really enjoyed our relationship. You know, did you did you consciously develop the brand, or did the deva- brand develop itself as just as a result of the way you're doing things? You know, um, in the beginning, it was just hey, let's come up with a, a brand, Medina Softball Clinics D up. And it just started growing slowly. And even to this day, we're, we're not pushing it. It's just happening. It's just, you know, people are kind of seeing the videos. And, and, and with Vic right now and the social media, you know, it's kind of, especially locally, it's word of mouth. And people come out and they have fun. Obviously, with some of our teams that we have now, they come out on a weekly basis. And it's, it's just pretty cool to just see it grow, you mm-hmm. know. And even with the firecrackers right now, uh, it's been a blessing. Just the coaches are so identical. Yeah, but well, that's it's been great to watch when somebody, when somebody asks you what's your secret sauce, right? How do you answer that question? Just can we have some fun? Uh, get out there and learn. Have some fun. Put some music on. Wanting the kids to come back. Uh, so it's not rocket science. Not at all. Yeah. Vic, how would you describe that? Cause I, and I know it makes them uncomfortable, right? Cause I, cause <laughs> I, I, cause I'm I, watching them. But, but you know what? Like, <laughs> like, but somewhere that vulnerability that you have is also part of your story too because what people get to see is like, oh, yeah, I had this figured out. or ever, No, no. It, it, it came as a result of something. So, you know, what would you say the secret sauce of the Medina brand is? Man, you know, it, it, it's – I know he says fun a lot, but the fun in titles like Tony's weekly corny jokes to the girls – that they just love. Like, they're, they're waiting for him to say, well, you guys want to hear some Carney B? <laughs> they, they can't wait to hear that. I, <laughs> and he'll say the same joke every week. Right. But they are going there to hear that joke. Right. right. Um, the contesting, short hop drill. Like, they all know that they go there. At the end of the, the clinic, there's going to be a short hop drill. Yeah. And they're just dying to get a part of that. You know, sometimes they'll throw in prizes, sometimes not. But, but they want to be a part of that. A couple noodles. Yeah, he'll price. say a couple noodles. All right, we're giving out a couple noodles. And... They love it. They don't even know what a cup of noodles is. <laughs> right? That's smart. I'm thinking at four cents a cup, that's, that's, that's pretty good. You can pick up a whole case. I, that's kind of, I, I like it. And pretty it's the smart. music and it's the, uh, you know what, what also stands out is when he calls out the girls to demonstrate. That's huge for them. Like, you know, like for a 10 year old to be called out to show her peers how to do a short hop. I mean, the, the motivation for that Makes girl is like, good. wow. Right. And you see it on their faces and they want to come back because, oh, I'm going to come back next week because he's going to have me demonstrate. And so you see that confidence start to develop then at a very young age. And then you see that continue as they start to age out, start to get yeah. older. But you start to see it in the way they carry themselves, the way they're behaving. Right. So you're or, developing that confidence. Or those girls come back and they help the younger ones. Yeah. So they remember that there was girls, down, you know, when they were 10 years old, there was girls in high school that were there helping out. And now our girls that were 10 when we started, they're back and helping the younger ones. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's just a whole cycle. And, and, and I think that's a secret sauce is just the confidence booster at a young age, you right. know, and there's no yelling and screaming. Uh, yeah, you know, he's going to get on you. He's going to expect a little bit. He's teaching. Um, but it's, it's in a way where get second in line. Go, uh, try again. Go second in line. Right. Do it again second in line. And they're like, again, again. And yeah. And then. They get it. They right. had a chance to. So there's balance right. to the yeah. relationships that you're yeah. building because we have to, <clears throat> we have to disrupt. You know, we have we have to be able to take a mind and take it somewhere else, or take a group and take the the mindset or the feeling somewhere else. So and it's it's not always a, a fun, nice thing to have happen because you got it's like you know clapping your hands really hard or something. But you you do have to change direction because that's part of instructing and teaching, right? And, st- and leading groups. So I think that that's important. Um, when you guys it, first started doing, it, go ahead. Yeah, uh, one more thing. Mm-hmm. It's an open door for everybody. Right, so at all of our clinics, it's from rec ball to travel, from new to exp- I mean, everybody's there. So all organizations are welcome. All you don't have to be on a Mentina team, and no nope. one's going to hand you a flyer saying "come play for us" and you need to be with us. And- <laughs> no, none of that. And, and I think that's what they all realize too. People um, appreciate that. Yeah, and we love taking pictures because it shows that there's all these different teams, all these different shirts being worn. You know, it's not always the F. Now that we were right. firecrackers. Um, and, and that's super important. Because as an industry, we're all one. Yes. Right. You know, another big thing I think, too, is uh, we encourage failing. 
Uh, in order to get better, and you, you got to get out of your comfort zone, and sometimes that's tough. Uh, most coaches uh, don't allow enough failure to get better. So we're encouraging, hey, quicker hands. I know you're going to throw that ball away. That's fine. Uh, speed the hands up, and before you know it, you know the hands are faster and the, the throw's accurate. So, how, how have you been able to maintain a good balance between uh, teaching fundies and techniques and fun? Right, because that can get imbalanced. All fun, no technique. Okay, you're having a great time, but you don't look real good, right? And then all technique and breaking things down, and you're moving kind of rigid, right? So how, how are you able to keep that balance? So one of the things that we like to do, and I have a lot of coaches out there helping me uh, to make sure, you know, we want to get a lot of reps, and if we have to pull a kid aside to keep the reps going. We'll pull that kid aside. Last night I had uh, Tony Rosales, who's uh, great. He was out there hitting some fungo. Uh, Tony can swing the stick a little bit. Tony can swing the stick, and he's oh awesome. Gosh. He comes out on Mondays and Tuesdays. He's he's awesome with a few other coaches. But, uh, again, it's just making sure that w- when we put you in a station, uh, you know, safety's first. So we want to make sure that nobody's getting hurt, and at the end of the day, you're getting better. And if you need a little bit more instructing, maybe we'll, we'll change the station around or change the drill around to accommodate, you know, their skill level. Uh, but I think that's important too, making sure the kill, the, the player doesn't feel overwhelmed. And like Vic was saying about Leilani, you know, it's a little intimidating sometimes when you see some of these older players. Sure. And you're like, man, I can't, you know, it's, it, that's fine. You'll get there. Just, right. you know, it just takes time, but it's not going to happen overnight. Right. We, we've had a saying that if the drill's not successful, change the drill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and the definition of success can be different, right? But if the drill's not successful, um, I want to be able to have us teach coaches when to recognize that and then be able to change the, the kind of the, the, the structure of the drill. So it's not always about ripping ground balls as hard as you can. And so, you know, that's, that's, you'll, you'll break it down, you'll roll balls, right? You'll... It's all about uh, building that confidence as well. I mean, when that, when that player leaves and, 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 and she's doing something that she couldn't do the prior workout, the feeling that she's getting right now, she wants to come back and do it again. Yeah. And that's something that you created. I think you and I agree that both of us uh, have trouble watching other people. We have trouble listening to other people for long amounts of time, right? We got our own minds the way we're doing it. And I think I shared this with you that you were doing a, uh, you're doing one of your classes down in Huntington at a small park down there. And um, I don't know if that was the night that I met Heath. Did, yes, I believe so. Is that yeah. when they went down? You went down to Worthy Park? I'm trying to yep. think. Cause, okay, God, time flies. And uh, But I want to go check it out. But, you know, I don't know if you know this. I try to be incognito, all black, put my hood on. Didn't know you were Somewhere there. where nobody was, you know, no one. So I come walking up and I park on the side. And I'm going around the backstop. And it's like first impression, right? When someone tells you about a player, it's your first impression. You can't get that first impression back. You know, you might be able to change a good second impression, but you can't get it back. And you had about six, eight, ten girls in a line. And they were young. And they were, you could tell they were, they were developing. And I, I remember just seeing you take the ball and you were extending range laterally or something, but you just took the ball and you just flipped it. So that she almost couldn't miss it. Right. But she was able to taste it. She was able to do what you wanted to do. And it was just getting her started, flipping the ball. And I looked at it and I went, he gets it. Like he gets, he gets the slow part of the drum roll before you try to go so fast. And so, man, I think I lasted a whole 15 minutes that night kind of watching. <laughs> but, but I really appreciated that approach because, um, listen, I, I mean, I, I, I appreciate everyone that's in the instructional field, but I think we have a long way to go before we really can expedite the learning of players. I mean, I think we've mastered our players' ability to know what they're doing wrong with things, right? But can you feel it doing, you know, when you're doing it right? So so your classes started, what, once a week? And then tell me about how they grew. Like, how, how did they grow? And Because then we're going to get to the part where, you know, you're basically like on a national or international tour now, you know. But how did the classes grow? I mean, what was what was what, what went into that? Oh, wow. So it, basically I just started out once a week, and it was just to uh, get some work in, in, in uh, with a handful of players and – and then we'd, we'd sent out a, a group tax, started with a group tax, and, and just started growing and growing. And, and then it, it just got to a point where, hey, I know you're in Torrance where you live, but do you ever come out to Huntington Beach or Orange County or uh, West Covina? And were you open to that at first or were you like, nah, I'm good? Like, what, what, how, well, how was that initially? I mean, this was all new to me. I mean, just, you, you know, but um, one thing I wanted to do, if there were players out there that were interested but just couldn't make it, uh, I would open up another day in a different city, and players would come out. And it was pretty cool. And then before you know it, hey, uh, can you come to this city? And I said, well, 
I can make it, but I want to make sure it's going to be worth my time. Like when I drive out to West Covina to beat the traffic, it takes me about an hour and a half every Thursday, which is fine. It's right. not a problem, but we get a ton of players out there, and it, it and it just uh, it's just amazing. So what I'm trying to do right now is just if 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 I'm in you know in, in this city this day, or if you're requesting uh, another city, as long as we get the players. And God, there was a time you know four days a week. Monday, it was in uh, Huntington Beach. Tuesday, Torrance. Wednesday, Downey. Thursday, West Covina. Friday was my day off, or I'd be flying out to maybe out of state or wherever. Um, but it just, you know, it just grew and grew. But it did was you find that you like that you like that diversity of switching environments, <clears throat> or did that, and can that be kind of difficult because you're always moving? Uh, well, I love it. So it, it's because it depends on your mindset. Like some people love to be on the move. Some people, hey, man, I need some consistency, same spot. So, but you love... is a good analogy. It's like a lunch truck, right? You know, like right, the lunch right, trucks are sure. hot right it's now. So Tony spot, always right. says that, and and I think it's a, it's a it's a good a great vision because we want to get in those places where maybe they don't have the access to the instruction like this. I'm seeing a, a yeah. lunch truck with Tony's <laughs> coming out the side and like <laughs> that's, that's funny. funny. Yeah. And that, that's kind of the analogy we, we look at. Like, you know, if there's people that are showing interest in the valley, and like, you know, come out to the valley when you're coming out, and and we'll look into that. How it's basically word of mouth. Yeah. Besides yeah. the group text, right? But when when did the, the the digital graphics that you started to bring in, like when did that start to happen? Or is that, that uh, take a little while? Started, no, that started about four, three, four years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and then with that approach, we wanted to be different. So we didn't want to be the, the simple, basic softball flyer. We wanted to include some lifestyle. We wanted to include, uh, you know, say if we're going uh, to Downey, in the background there'd be a picture of the original McDonald's. Ooh, on Firestone. Yeah, you know, right. st- stuff like that. <laughs> just, just uh, you know, landmark uh, areas in the cities. Or, or, you know, we feature some of the girls that come out to the Torrance Clinic on the flyer. Mm-hmm. Uh, stuff like that. Just, just to kind of be different, uh, be eye-catching mm-hmm. on social media. And, and when and, did you start to develop the YouTube? When did you start to develop now? Taking uh, the videos, well, bringing them more, you know. Well, Tony's had the YouTube going for quite a while. Um, I think it started when he first went to Hawaii. Um, which it was, was actually a little bit before, before that, that huh? but it started getting serious when yeah. uh, about maybe six, seven years ago when I went to Hawaii. And um, I remember going to Hawaii for the first time and just couldn't believe it. And so on that five-hour flight home, I was just thinking of a way I could thank my buddies over there and just Ryan and Jerry and the guys. And and uh, so it started getting a little bit more uh, technical, and I wanted to make sure that, um, you know, I got players from different organizations. Music. So it was your idea to kind of start to capture the story of what was happening? Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. It's just kind of my way of saying thanks and, right. and just bringing some of the players in uh, that have been around with me for a while. And it kind of gets a chance – you know, you, one of the things that I think it was Jerry Painter, one of my buddies who I'm going to be uh, seeing tomorrow, it's like, I love the fact that you have players from, you know, the Firecrackers, Bat Busters, Crone Angels. Yeah. It's pretty cool in there. So right, right. Um, so we, we, we focus on uh, putting ideas together in the video, in the video. And, you know, especially with the music, too. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just, it's just a lot of fun for everybody. Right. And so when that first started, uh, was it pretty basic, a, a phone, a simple little camera? And, again, the point I want to make to people is that it doesn't, you know, it might look fancy. We have some of this stuff here. But capturing a story can be done with, you know, I don't know, 720. I mean, it doesn't, you know, it's, maybe it's a little grainy or something. But a good story is a good story, right? And so when you first started capturing that basic equipment, phones, what were you? Uh uh, maybe a teenager uh, that was uh, recording some uh, skateboard stuff, right? Grab one of those guys, have them bring out their phone, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's crazy even what I think uh, some of the social media influencers use right now in their phone setups, right? It's kind of yeah. crazy, little halo lights and stuff like that. The, the, the ability to put yourself out there now and, and what is available for people, you know, I think there's a lot of interesting people in the world. And so, so many more of them have an opportunity to be able to tell their story now. So, so, so when you started to diversify, meaning get out of the, out of the area a little bit, started with Hawaii? Was uh, that, was no, that, it actually, uh, how started, did that happen? You started to branch out a little bit besides, you know, West Covina and some of the local place, but how did you start to like branch out now nationally and get in some other regions? It was because of the videos and people would message me and, Hey, do you ever go here or there? But it was Colorado. And I remember, uh, somebody reached out, uh, one of my buddies, uh, Nestor, 
uh, from Colorado says, I really dig what you're doing, man. And, you know, I have my niece and she's an outfielder. And uh, would you uh, be open to coming out here and we'll take care of your, your flight and hotel and everything? And I was like, man, I'm flying out to Colorado. Pretty cool to do a camp. Uh, and that was just the first of many after that. So uh, yeah. pretty cool. And then the Hawaii thing was, um, it was, must have been about six or seven years ago. Uh, How did we that were, happen? Because that's a strong <clears throat> relationship with you. Yeah, I was with the Bat Busters about, oh God, like I said, about seven, eight years ago. Mm -hmm. And we were doing an organizational camp. And Mike had invited Pacific Pride out, uh, one of the teams from Maui. And uh, I think we were, we were having a break. And it was at La Mirada Park. And I went over there and just said hi to the guys. And they go, hey, we know who you are. You're mm -hmm. Tony Medina. I was like, whoa. They go, yeah, you're, you're, you're pretty famous in Hawaii. I was like, cut hey. it out. Hey, stop, stop. And they go, no, we you got the wrong guy. <laughs> yeah, not me. Uh, so anyways, uh, I said, hey, if you guys are interested, if I'm doing a camp in West Covina tomorrow if you want to come out and, you know, uh, have some fun. And they came out and they said, hey, we're, we're going to invite you to Hawaii. And I was like, cut it out. Stop it. I've never been to Hawaii. And mm -hmm. two months later, I'm on a plane, just could not believe uh, I was going to Hawaii to do a camp. And they took care of everything. We were out there for a week and just – just had the time of my life. I, I mean, it, it really changed my life. Uh, just the fact that somebody's bringing me out here and doing that. Uh, and how often were you getting out originally? Once a year, a couple times a year? Um, to Hawaii? Mm -hmm. So after that, uh, it was every year, twice a year, mm -hmm. um, two islands. And four, we did a four island trip. Uh, wow, that was mm -hmm. crazy. You're kind of Jones and now you haven't been out there for a while. So Yeah, mm -hmm. last year I missed. I, I'm excited about going out there tomorrow. Tomorrow, right? Yeah, it's, it's going to be a blast. But just, uh, just, just seeing the people and the players and just, uh, just how they treat you. It's, so it's, tell me about amazing. Coach Jason and how you guys met and how that's, that, that came together. So I think it was maybe the third or fourth year that uh, we went to Hawaii and we had uh, – we did a clinic, but we also did some games where we changed the players around, and as well as the coaches were coaching for different teams. And Jay was uh, one of the coaches on one of the teams, and we just hit it off, you know. Uh, Jay's uh, he's a blue collar guy like myself, and and we just uh, started talking and just built this bond. And uh, I think a year later, he was at the other clinic that we were doing, uh, helping out. And, and and again, it was it was amazing just to um, again see him the following year, and we just hit it off and and and. Um, as a matter of fact, I sent you this morning uh, a video of Jay, that little interview that we did. Just, just a great guy. So, um, but yeah, that, just like everybody else, we meet over there. You just, you know, sometimes you just meet a guy who's pretty special, and that's Jay. So, with limited resources that he has available to him, and being able to get his team to North Carolina for, you know, an event, pretty awesome. What he's, what Amazing. he's doing to empower his kids, right? Yeah, with Heath, and that's a, that's another thing too. So. Um, these people that we meet uh, when we go to these, you know, out-of-state camps like Heath Miller. So now, now let's go east, right? So now yeah. we went, went to Hawaii. And then – but was there anything in between? I mean, how, how – I mean, Heath is in North Carolina. So what led up? How did you how did you meet Heath Miller? Same thing. Reached out for me um, via email, uh, messaged me through Facebook, and just hit it off. And now we're best friends. We talk, you know, a couple times a day. Uh, and, and, and it's nice to see him running D-Up camps out there now. I think Heath was the first uh, uh, out-of-state D-Up uh, mm -hmm. instructor. Mm -hmm. He's doing an amazing job. And he's the one who put a, a couple months ago that camp together out there where mm -hmm. we had about 15 firecracker teams. Right. We had some folks from Virginia, Ohio, mm -hmm. uh, Indiana, Hawaii. It was cool. Jay he, made, he made North Carolina a firecracker gathering place, but people gather. But he he implemented something that I think everyone got infected. Oh my with, god! I got which is a good thing. That was probably one of the best times I've ever had in softball. Yeah, yeah. The fifteen years that I've been to New in softball, just ah, uh, just and 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 what made that stand? You've had a lot of experiences. So what was it about that weekend? Now now that it's all done, what was the big takeaway from that weekend that made it? more special than normal it was just real you know it wasn't a tournament we had uh, friendly games and nobody was competing it was just everybody there for the same reason having fun meeting new folks as a matter of fact on that friday night we met at this uh, pizza place uh, mm -hmm. with all the coaches uh, from the firecrackers and uh, other organizations and it was just uh, it was just taking the competition away yeah we competed when we were on the field but it was just getting to know one another right and just building that bond and, and just coming together as uh, coaches and parents and, and just having a great time. 
Well, I like what you said about being real, right? Like being real, because again, I think that's, you know, that's where I've enjoyed working with Vic about just, just being real with people, right? They're, people yeah. aren't looking for, they're not even thinking of the word organic and they're not looking mm -hmm. to be cared for. Uh, you've heard me both say on the calls before our, our, our number one principle is the golden rule, treat people like you want to be treated. But, yep. you know, Vic, what, what was that like that, that weekend out in North Carolina too? Because again, it's a fruition of a lot of years, you guys being on the road, building yeah. the brand. And I, I don't want to talk a little bit about DEP after that too, but tell me about that weekend in North Carolina. It was a few weeks ago. And it was I got to tell you the, the highlight for me that weekend was uh, this little 12 year old girl that wasn't involved in any of the clinics or any of the games. Um, the following day, it was like an open clinic, so she had signed up for that. But that Saturday, there was a 12-year-old girl named AC. She showed up, and uh, her and her parents were big fans of Tony and, you know, watch all the videos and do all that. And she showed up, and we were in the scrimmage part of it, right? We had a bunch of games going on. And she showed up, and she was just in awe about what was going on, right? Seeing her response to seeing, see, you know. Talking to Tony, meeting with Tony, seeing our girls that came from out of state. We put a little team of, of Cali, Hawaii, Ohio, Indiana together. Um, <laughs> and her eyes just lit up. And I was like, where's your equipment? She looked at her dad. I said, go get your equipment. We'll get you in. And this is a high school right. open division, right? right? So she didn't know what age, age group it was. She ran all the way across to her car park, across the park, came back. And I said, uh, jump in right field. She was like, what? Jumping right field. She's, so she went in there, played right field, got a ball hit to her. She almost made a play at first. And then we came up to bat, and I said, you're leading off. Nice. And there's not even a word. right She's in, like, right. Boom, she got a helmet. Guess what? Double the right field. Oh, man. That's made it. her day. That's I mean, it. that that was Sealed my memory. Deal. I mean, besides seeing all the firecrackers in, in North Carolina, a region that, you know, I've never been there. And um, to see that, and, and I think I texted you a few times, I mean, just seeing all the Firecrackers gear and the people excited to be a part of it, and I thought it was just here in Cali. Pretty special, right? Yeah. So, so we're, we work in the softball industry, but when you start talking about these events, they're people events. Yeah. I mean, it happens to be what we're doing is softball, but it's really experiencing the people, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what made it really special. So I, I'm just appreciative of the, of the amount of – how many people put it out there on social media? You know, it wasn't just one or two people. No. I mean, it was it was mul multiple firecracker regions talking about their experience out there, which is really really cool. So, um, let's talk about D up. So, when did that become official? Was that like from the get go, or did that take a yeah. little while? Like, you tell know, me about D up. How that started? D up. Um, so we were trying to brand, and and we figured, you know, we we've been using uh, Medina softball clinics, and and so we got with Vic and created a. Uh, a logo and and uh so you know it, it's kind of crazy when you hear even other teams that you're playing against d up uh before they go on the field right, it, right. It, it's pretty cool so sure. it's just uh just just a brand that mm -hmm. we came up with and it's just it, it's just uh stuck and people love it i love it and um you know it's just going strong and it's i believe it's expanding now right and so it's yeah. not just you and you on the road so tell me about that too because that's great when there starts to become a demand for what you're doing people want to be part of it right and then you extend yourself a little bit so yeah it's really important to me if, if someone's going to carry that name and that logo and, and and uh start doing the instructing uh that they understand uh you know what we're all about and just make sure you're, you're teaching the right technique and, and and it's okay if someone's different they're getting it done we, we don't want to change that right uh there's more than one way to do something so if they're getting it done great you know take your hat off but you got to have some fun out there you got to make sure you're getting a lot of reps and teach kind of like the basics so joe uh martinez started d up in texas and joe's great Dallas went out Fort there Worth, a few yeah. months yeah he's awesome great guy. um again heath miller out mm -hmm. in north carolina mm -hmm. and then now uh jay Jay out in Hawaii, Hawaii. which is pretty cool. Love and it. in Maui, too. Uh, Jerry Painter, he's going to start D-Up. He's got his new facility. We're going to check that out tomorrow. So it, it's pretty cool. It's you know, it's it's a lot of fun to see the brand grow. Right. Uh, but it's about the people at the end of the day. Sure, sure. Yeah. It's It's been great to watch because, again, it kind of goes hand in hand. And it doesn't displace what you're doing with – right now you're with the firecrackers. It doesn't displace. It kind of works hand in hand with it, right? And so Absolutely. I love that you're getting um, – other coaches involved and allowing them to kind of build themselves within your brand too, because that, that's what we've talked about, right? Brands inside brands and yep. empowering people to have their own type of success. So that's got to be exciting as well too, right? Someone like Heath, who does have a little bit of a performing background and 
understands kind of the stage presence and stuff, but really doing this out of service. I mean, providing for his daughter, um, loving what he's doing, um, but it's got to feel good to watch others get involved with that as well, right, Vic? Oh, yeah. It's amazing. And those guys call me up all the time. And, you know, I'm not no social media expert, but um, I've learned with, with working on Tony's stuff and, and my background in radio that, uh, you know, it's there. I use it. And, and they call me, and, and I'm not a you know, top tier graphic designer either, but I give them some tips and, and they've kind of used that platform that we've used, you know, get into the lifestyle of things, you know, don't just be so softball. Don't, it doesn't have to have a softball on there to be a softball clinic, you know? Right. right. <laughs> so, and, and, and they've took that on. Heath, Heath has done an amazing job with that. Actually, he, um, he gets it, you know, and, yeah. and he understands uh, what he needs to, to be successful out there. And it's great to see these guys popping up and great to see them, not only them, uh, getting the opportunity, but them also getting other people involved, right? So sure. Heath Miller has uh, JP, a guy back there that does oh, a lot yeah. of the digital stuff, and and now he's being brought into to learn a little bit more. Right. So it's like you said, it's it's all about the people, and and that's uh, that's rewarding, man. Seeing you really know is. everybody else kind of learn, and everybody else get a piece of the pie, and and, and really they love it, you know. So what extend it's extending that experience so that others yeah. can 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 have it, right? Yeah. And so. I mean, I don't know. I like to throw this question out for for every ten softball coaches that are out there, random ten or whatever. How many of them are having a fulfilling experience year to year? How many of them have a peace of mind? How many of them mm-hmm. have a, a certain happiness? Um, I, I I I don't see the numbers where I want them. Right. So out of every ten, I don't know. What would you guys say? How many of them are, are pretty happy with what they're they're doing versus too much time frustrated, mm-hmm. angry, wondering why? It's not better than it is, you know. So out of how out of t- out of ten, how many are getting it and and have that experience? We want them to have. You, you know, it's funny. Uh, you know, obviously, I have a few teams under my umbrella. I, I you know, for for my teams, um, we talk about you know the experience and what we want. And there's only going to be one trophy at the end of the year at nationals. And so outside of that, are, are are you having a good time? Are you happy? Are your players happy? Are your parents happy? I, for 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 our coaches, I, I would. I don't know, seven, eight, mm-hmm. you know, it's tough. <laughs> it's, it's a good number when they're, when they're under kind of under your teaching and influence, right? Um, let's take the typical softball coach that doesn't have that relationship with someone that's from a different realm. Right. So I guess my point is in, in my experience, the numbers are low. Yeah. Like it's, there's, if, if there was enough happiness out there, then we wouldn't need to do what we're doing so much, but it just, you know, we were talking earlier. I, I, I feel people's hurting here, right? Mm-hmm. Believe it or not. Like I, I feel when someone doesn't have what we have. And so for so many people, they, they're they chasing certain things that they think is going to provide happiness, but they're chasing the wrong thing, right? And so, yeah, you coach teams and you have teams under your umbrella. But what we've been talking about is the experience that's taking place whenever you're on the field with a group of kids. So whether it's your class with D up or whether it's a practice with your team is that, isn't it true that if, if a lot of coaches out there would learn to look at the game through our eyes, right. See a little bit differently. They could have a better experience, right? Because it's not rocket science, right. And it's not, don't downplay when somebody says they're not about winning in championships because we're all competing for it. We just don't over prioritize it. Right. Like I'm proud to say, that I've never prioritized it, but it's something that's been very important of it now, important to us. And we have the notoriety we have because we've had some success in those areas. But if you, if you know us and know our daily goals, it's about a daily experience, right? And so isn't, isn't there hope for the coach out there? That's, I always think on Sunday nights, right? How many times on (laughs) Sunday nights, the, the spouse looks over and goes, why are you doing this? Yeah. Right. You're frustrated again. Just got off the phone with, a, I mean, I've said the story over and over, just got yeah. off the phone with another angry parent, you know, at 10 o'clock at night on Sunday, you don't have any boundaries to your own personal time. Why are you doing this? Like how common is that statement out there? And can we turn that around? Help coaches turn that around? You know, it's pretty cool. Tony is um, one of my coaches, 12 year coaches, Christina Chavez and Abel weren't able to make their, uh, their game on Saturday. Or, I'm sorry, their practice on Saturday. They're out of town, their game on Sunday. Uh, so Vic and I worked with the team and, uh, it, it was our day off, you know, mm-hmm. and on Sunday, uh, we actually had two other coaches, uh, Pete Martinez and, um, Hector Rubio came out, uh, just to support the team, get out there. They, they got out there on Sunday and the parents were like, you know, why are you guys What's out? This? We just, right. we just yeah. love it, you know, and it's their day off. 
Um, they just got back from Arizona. So to see these coaches out there with myself um, just volunteer their time on a Sunday on their day off was pretty cool. And it says a lot. It's a great message, right? Absolutely. And they become interchangeable. So, I mean, everyone knows, you know, we remember it's like the substitute teacher comes in. It's like, all right, it's time to just and, kind of get crazy. And <laughs> their kids came out, too. Their daughters came out. So Leilani's yeah. in the dugout. Becca, who was amazing as well, came out and working with the girls on their day off, mm-hmm. Sunday. Mm-hmm. You know, just the whole day out there. It's pretty cool to see. You don't see that too often. And this is one of those, those endeavors once you get bitten by the bug and then you're having a good experience. Who wants a day off? You know, like, I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of scary to think about re- retirement would be like, what, stop doing what I love? Yeah. Like, that'd be kind of interesting. Maybe, maybe not full time and every day, all day or whatever. But I mean, why would we want to stop doing what we love if we love it? You know, I, I've talked a few times about, uh, you know, our kids, our kids achieve in school, right? It's very important. Uh, then they graduate from college and they start providing for themselves, right? And they have to provide. But there's a the P word in the middle that is, is Really, I'm going to say that what we're an example of, and that's purpose, right? It's find something that you love to do and do it as often as you can. So what did we choose to do as kids in our free time, whether it was inside or outside, right? And it's something that I, I, I don't think can be overstated because I, I don't think enough people take responsibility for knowing what truly drives them. Your purpose might not feed you. So maybe you still have to provide with your day job. But don't discount your purpose. And I think there's sometimes there's this nobility of like, well, no, I don't want to do that for myself because I've got to do this. I've got to provide. But in the end, you're, then you're just looking forward to – like there's a lot of people that just look forward to the weekends. They don't like their Mondays through Fridays or this or that, right, and the grind. But you were talking earlier about even in, in your job, uh, in your day job, you're a people person and you just like talking with people. So whether you were working or you were just walking three miles a day, you're going to talk to people but it's intertwined in your job now, right? And got recognized and they pulled you into a sales area, right? Yeah, yeah. I was deliver those five-gallon bottles and <laughs> I was talking to my customers too much and boss pulled me in and said, hey, I'm going to make you a sales guy. So here we are today. Which didn't appeal to you. No. No. <laughs> but I trusted my manager and he said, I think this is the, the right thing for you. So yeah. my mom, when my, my mom and dad were alive, they used to you know, do their walks and, and my mom would say it was hard to walk with my dad because he would stop and talk to everybody. She said, we wouldn't get the walk in because <laughs> everybody was on, they'd see he'd stop and he'd start talking to him. So it was constantly like start and stop and start and stop. But you know, you're just that type of person. I just think that connecting, right? Bringing people together is a very, very powerful thing. And uh, so I'm just, I just feel like there's so much room to be creative inside softball, right? Like, okay, you're, you're famous in Hawaii, um, but I know that you know this softball famous, isn't like global famous, right? (laughs) So, so for people that tend to get full of themselves with a little softball success, just realize it's softball. It's a small world. Uh, Everyone in softball knows what we're doing and has their own opinions of what we're doing. But it's softball because us three can go into a probably a restaurant somewhere and there might be one person that recognizes the garb. <laughs> I, have you had this experience though? Been in the airport and see someone wearing firecracker stuff or see the firecracker stickers on the, on the road, on the, the freeway cars, or something yeah. like that? Like every time for me, it's, it's, it's like – or someone will, will see somebody in an airport and they'll ask them and then there's a story and you're getting it and you're like, what? Like how did this <laughs> connection even happen? But it's a pretty humbling thing when, when you realize that your brand is getting out there and, and – and people are, are getting together over it, right? It's kind of yeah. kind of cool. Even tomorrow, um, you know, heading out to Hawaii. Yeah, we're going to do some, a lot of softball stuff. But man, I can't just wait to see my friends. Yeah, Jerry yeah. and Jay and Brant. So, so you're so you're going to do your your on field stuff. But I mean, so what? They're going to be a nice dinner. Like what? What else are you looking forward? We, we to? We have some stuff planned. Uh, we're going to shoot some videos. Uh, we're going to have a camp. We're going to have some games. Uh, but just to hang out with my buddies. Yeah, that's that, awesome. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and they need it. So how are how are the islands right now, and what's what's their they're they're opening, opening back up? And yeah, I think they're getting better. Probably yeah. what uh, half capacity in hotels and stuff like that, or just seems like for a long time, you know, Jay was kind of on lockdown. He couldn't do anything, right? Yeah, they've been on lockdown. Yeah, <laughs> they've had to come here uh, quite often just because they couldn't even get on the field. They'd be in his backyard working out right. most of the time. Right. Yeah. And Oki, Coach Oki. Yeah, Coach Oki. He's one of the best here. instructors in the world, man. This guy's awesome. And got what do you, what do you love about him? Just the way <laughs> he uh, presents himself to, uh, to the players and soft spoken. And he can be a little tough out there, but he is you know he's a little older, but he's he's still learning. Right. Yeah, he's still learning, and I can't wait to pick his brain when I see him. Yeah, again, I love it. Well, with that, with that mindset too, because you're, this this is one of those great. Uh, 
the sport is great because you're you're always learning. You're never going to stop learning, right? So tell me about some some influences. Again, we've stated it's it's kind of hard to listen to people that aren't inspiring or don't really hold you down, right? But who who in the industry do you like to listen to, watch, uh, can hold your attention down for a little bit? So who do you draw from? You know, um, it's funny. We're, we're talking about Hawaii, but one of the best coaches I ever came in contact with uh, was um, – one of my buddies who's no longer with us, his name was uh, Ryan Sousa, and uh, he was best friends with o- Coach Oki and Jerry. Uh, and we used to talk all the time, every day, just about players and not changing things. Uh, and, and, and sometimes it wasn't even about softball. It was just, hey, that kid's going to be a great person when she gets older. Uh, she's going to do something special. Mm-hmm. Uh, just things like that that um, just kind of opened up your mind a little bit. And, and it's great, you know, to to um, – you know, see these talented players, but at the end of the day, you know, you, you want them to be successful in life. It's a camaraderie. And Ryan and I used to talk about that all the time. So it, it's got to be Ryan. He was he was huge. Awesome. And when you when you are the, like the physical model that you see in your mind of what you want your players to look like, right? Are you do you draw images from from videos and games that you see? How people are getting it done? Are there any instructors out there that you borrow from? So how are you creating that image? I always tell people it's kind of a funny term, but I like to throw it out there. I, I want to be a softball stylist and not so much a softball coach. There's a million softball coaches. But when I say stylist, it's like, what does a good stylist do? When you walk out of that salon, man, you're feeling like a million bucks. Like you look like a million bucks. Like when you, when you hear a, a woman say, you know, she just got her eyelashes done or her her eyebrows threaded or whatever's going on, but she just feels so good about herself, right? And so where are you drawing those images of what you want your kids to look like when, they're, when, when they went through a certain amount of your training? Well, you know what? Uh, and we talked about George. I love George. and George Araujo. George Araujo mm-hmm. one of the best instructors out there. Mm-hmm. Still talked to him. Talked to him last week. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when, when you look at some of George's players, you know, you're like, hey, I want my kid to be like a couple of those players over there yeah. at Cal State Fullerton. Yeah. Uh, George is awesome. Yeah. Like you said, one of the best and does it for the right reasons. And it's been great to watch him go from the Lakewood ladies, right? right? And then spend his time with us. And he was in our dugout for a couple of years. And now he's up there on that. That's such a beautiful venue at Cal State Fullerton, don't you think? I mean, I just think, man, that's such a great place. Love George. I remember the first time I met George, uh, we were at Artesia Park. uh, And one of my friends uh, had a daughter playing on George's team. And I, and I was watching George's team at Lakewood Ladies play at that time. And it was the first time that I really seen a team play like boys. Just get out there, arm angles, quick hands. But George was actually out there getting it done too. And so my buddy, Bobby Creel, says, hey, I want, I want you to meet George. So we go out there and, I'm, you know, the first thing I said, hey, uh, do you play baseball? And he goes, yeah, I just got back from Arizona, national tournament. Like, so did I. And we just hit it off. He invited me to uh, his workout the following week. And uh, we're great friends to this day. Just what a great man. And extremely humble. I mean, again, the, the competitive aspect of this and the ambition, right? There's a lot of uh, people and coaches that have ambition to be this and do that. Um, when George came to me and he said, I- I've got a crazy idea. I don't, I don't know if you're going to like it or not, but I- I- can I run it by you? I said, I'm sure you can run anything by me. He goes, what about, they were the Lakewood ladies at the time. He goes, what about if we got together and we became the Lakewood firecrackers? And it was interesting because because Lakewood, I know there's the Lakewood hustlers, but I don't think that name was as strong back then or if they were even around. But Lakewood, the connotation with Lakewood was Lakewood ladies. So, mm-hmm. so taking ladies out but keeping Lakewood there still was George. Like it was still his team. And so, so I think that's when I first got my first – idea of like the Taco Bell Pizza Hut is like, wait a minute, that brand and this brand. But I, but my point is he offered it, right? Like he wasn't about acquiring, let me get where I want to be, you know, let's collaborate and let's bring it together. And I think that that's something that's underappreciated because the notoriety usually goes to the most dominant personalities that have won the most championships, right? And, um, and all credit goes to all coaches that have had that type of success. But there's so much more to softball. Right? There's so much more to stop. So again, we've been there. Don't discount success. I don't discount that ambition. There's there's levels, right? But you said it. There's one team that wins the championship. And there's thousands of people that are playing this sport. And so what is the message, right? Everybody knows the pain of the agony of defeat, right? Whether it's a strikeout or losing a game or losing a player or whatever it is. But there's so much more to the experience, I think, that, again, starting with the beginning of our conversation, like the lunch truck, it's not, mm-hmm. it's not 
always what people think it is, right? And then next thing you know, either your daughter's aged out or she's decided not to play anymore and you realize I missed it. And, and that's what these conversations are about, you guys, is that, you know, again, to try to share a story, a relatable story, people can, I mean, we know, all know what it's like to fail. We know what it's like to, to lose, to, to, to not have a certain success. Didn't start at the top, started just for the right reasons. But the message that I want people to understand is that success is available for everyone, I believe, in so many different aspects, you know, um, you really, really can carve, carve your way. And especially in softball, because I think that even though we're traditionalists and certain things have been done a certain way for so long, I still think like there's open frontier in front of us, right? I mean, I mean, this room was a, a box <laughs> with certain color walls, right? And so you bring it to life, right? So what, what's your advice to coaches out there that are uh, in the grind? Maybe they're having that Sunday night conversation from their spouse, like, why are you doing this? Like, what's, the, what's your message of hope to them as far as sticking with it and being able to create something that's more fulfilling for themselves? Kind of figure out what's going to make you happy, you know, and, and, and just go with that. And, and if it's, maybe it's a kid that's struggling and you can see some potential and you bring it out of that player. You know, whatever it's going to take to just keep you in this game. For me, it's, it's, it's just being happy. And my players bring me that joy and happiness. So, you know, for coaches out there that are just really trying to figure things out, uh, maybe look to, to what makes you happy. And it doesn't always, it does or doesn't always go hand in hand with kicking ass. That's mm -hmm. the competitive aspect, right? But Vic, what, what, what are your words to him? So <laughs> a lot of people ask me, why are you coaching high school? Because I coach high school now. Why are you coaching high school? All right, we're at, uh, I coach at Norwalk High School and, you know, the, the school is not known for you know, high level sports, we're not, whatever. But I, what I've learned is we got girls that are out there that are using softball as their outlet to get away from the world for a little bit. Um, on my current team, it's a completely I, different demographic. Yeah, I mean, right. on my on my team right now, I, I've learned. You know, there's a few girls. There's one girl that, um, you know, the other day blew out her knee. We had to call nine one one, and it didn't dawning me until that moment that um, she's not necessarily living with mom anymore. She's pretty independent. She's living her own life, staying with her aunt. But she knew exactly where to go. I, I need to go to Kaiser. I need to wow. do this. Here's my phone. Get my phone. Like, and that was eye opening. Wow. For me. Yeah. yeah. You know, I also have the girl who uh, starting new to softball. She missed a day, and I was like, "What happened yesterday?" She's like, uh, "I had to go to court." I was like, why? I said, you don't mind me asking, right? And the, her friend was like, tell him, tell him. And she's like, well, I got in trouble for having a, a joint on the streets the other day. Uh, we moved to out in the IE, and I got in some trouble, and I had to go get it taken care of. And for me, it was like, that's rewarding for me that I'm giving her a place to give her another option, right? So she's Without not judgment. Out, yeah, without judgment. And I told her, I said, look, you can be honest with me or you cannot tell me. I said, with my travel team, most of the girls are pretty honest with me about what's going on in their lives. It's just the relationship you build. And, and that's been, you know, a lot of cases throughout the years. It's like, that's what's been winning for me. I'm, I'm not the top tier championship coach. Um, I've been yelled at by other high profile coaches uh, in, in the dugout. You know, why do you, why'd you call a change? You, you drank too much tequila last night. Are you kidding me? Blah, blah, blah. And, and, and I'm talking for, probably the majority of coaches out there um, that, you know, just want to be a part of these kids' lives, want to be, you know, we're all learning. Like I said, I'm not the championship coach. I don't have a, you know, national championship, but uh, I do believe I have a heart and that I really want to help as many girls out as I can. So whether... So right there you relate to 99% of people coaching. Yeah. So whether I, I don't necessarily know the correct, you know, slap defense... I, I make a mistake. We're human. It's fine. Right. But, you know, I, I'm giving a lot of my time. And, you know, yeah, my daughter plays, but there's times where I, I forget about my daughter. And, you know, that's something that I'm working on. Not as a coach. uncommon. Yeah, as a coach, that's what I'm working on. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm, I'm forgetting about her, right. but I'm worried about the other 15. And, and high school is, is a great perspective for me because, you know, these are kids. I have four girls out of the 15, 20 girls that even play travel ball. So a lot of these girls grew up with me in the rec ball days, and I know their families. Um, 
I know their struggles. I know what they're going through. And I know that this is something they want to do. This is gets them out of the house. This gets them away from their problems. Right. This gives them uh, some confidence. I mean, I have a, a girl that played second base uh, for us the last couple of days. She's had amazing games. The first first game of the season, we brought her in the pinch run. Uh, she missed the sign and got gunned out at second. Uh, her dad was there, got mad, left the game. This kid's going through, uh, her parents are going through a divorce. So we brought her back the next game. Look, you're going to play second base. Boom, she did a great job. Confidence is up. She forgot about yesterday and yeah. her dad leaving. So for me, as, as hopefully uh, a lot of coaches out there that are watching this, um, just know that you're making a difference in a lot of these girls' lives. Whether, you're, whether you know the game or not, you know, we're all learning, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of opportunity out there. And if you can make a difference in one person's life, I mean, hey, that's, that's rewarding. It's worth it, right? Yeah. And you do this long enough, it starts to – it, not that it starts to pile up, but it starts to multiply, you know. Mm-hmm. And then all the experience that you gain, you know, you start to, start to develop your craft a little bit too. But I love the point that you brought up, uh, Vic, because – there's there's different markets in softball so we deal mm-hmm. here with travel ball so you have to have a certain amount of support you have to have a certain amount of financial support you 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 know it's always a tough position to to listen to a family that doesn't have the disposable income to send their kid to camps right which i would tell you something i always commend you on as well too is that your, your classes are very affordable right because i think it gets easy to think about either how much money you need to make to provide for yourself or you want to provide for others or what your service is worth right and and not thinking enough about um what people can afford then i think once you fall into that kind of category you tend to undercharge a lot of times because you're so empathetic towards people and so you, you have to kind of balance out once you have a business structure because you have a lot of costs and different things like that but finding that middle ground to where you feel good about you you feel good about the affordability of it but you're not working against yourself so that you never can retire from your other job you know try to find that balance but i love that you're talking about that different demographic of players that it's an outlet for them right because there, I think there's different pockets of softball, the rec leagues, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the kids that are playing it for an outlet, we can't forget them. Like that's very important to them. They're not, they're not thinking. We grew up in an area where I've said this before. I, I don't remember anybody talking about college in my high school, yeah. and maybe they were. I just wasn't part of those conversations <laughs> or something. But we didn't think about that. It was, it was a very blue collar. You're going to work. You're going to follow your dad's footsteps or whatever. We didn't think. Not a whole lot of planning. Yeah. Um, but to be able to provide that outlet and know that those kids are going through things at home, right? So then the field becomes their sanctuary, mm-hmm. right? That's their safe place, right? Yep. But that's our safe place too, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we've had um, a couple of uh, kids lose some parents yeah. uh, last year. And, um, you know, they come out to the clinic and it is their safe place. And um, it's, it's pretty cool to see them with a smile yeah. and kind of understanding, you know, their background and uh, – but again, it's one of those things where, hey, you know, it's, it's, it's not so much about softball. It's yeah. about people. Well, I, I've, I've mentioned before, too, that one of the first things I, I noticed and experienced is probably back in the 90s is, you know, the, the normal tension, competitive tension or divisiveness that takes, takes place out on the field. And then something happens to someone and they lose their life. And then there we are in the church at a funeral. And it's 90 percent softball people. Mm-hmm. supporting the family that just lost somebody. And it's not all from the same organization. And I was like, whoa, for this time in here and for unfortunately what brought us together, everyone's nice. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like they care about each other. Why does it take a freaking funeral for this to happen, right? So competitive, the game starts between the lines. That stuff is still there, right? Uh, there was a, a long time. My, my brother taught me to appreciate uh, you know, nature and sunsets and different things like that. And so for quite a long time, one of my best memories, uh, probably 15 years ago, were, were, were players that they could be on second base for whatever reason, pass ball or double or whatever, and I'll look out, about to give a sign, and the player will, will point to the sky behind her, and she'll be like, look at the sunset. And then, like, and then I put on the sign for the next play, right, and just go, you know, here we are, we're trying to score a run, we're in bracket play, and we're Colorado, whatever it is, and you notice the colors in the sky, Right, And it just means that you're not detaching from the bigger thing. Because I also believe that that player that understands that bigger picture is also able to detach from her crummy at bat because that's part of the game, right? She puts it in perspective, still hurts, didn't feel good about it, but she realizes she's not a disappointment. Her swing's not broken. 
she just swung at a bad pitch. It's just a story. You know, when you tell your story of, look, I'm not this, but I'm this, right? I'm not a championship coach, but I'm a human with a heart. God, what would you rather have? Like if you really think about it, but then there's the things that we've talked about, whether it's chasing a dollar for financial success or, or accolades in a sport, but then when you have them, isn't there always a story of somebody that has those things and they're not happy? Oh yeah. So a lot you know, of those. Yeah. So, so if you're, if financial success or championships or whatever, those accolades can come as a result of the way you live your life. Now, now it fits. Now it's just in a, it's a room addition that you're already doing things right, but you don't want to be chasing scholarships, championships, acquisition of players, um, you know, fighting to position your team and it's hollow. You don't, you don't have anything organic. And so that's why I keep going back to like the feeling that you guys have in your classes. Right. And I don't think it matters whether there's 10 kids or 40 or I don't know. Some of those classes can get pretty big, but (laughs) You're pulling it off. It's infectious, right? Yeah, it's 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 fun. I was having a bad day on Monday um, at work and and uh, went out to Anaheim and uh, saw Abby, little Abby. Father passed mm-hmm, away last mm-hmm, year, and mm-hmm. she was smiling. We were Is talking. That going on a year now. No, it's, yeah. yeah, yeah, great yeah. kid. Just put a smile on my face and changed my day. I was so happy. Yeah, we're just clowning around out there. She's so awesome. I was so thankful that I had the uh, opportunity to meet him the one time in the warehouse. And anytime you see a strong man mm-hmm. act uh, humble and docile and kind and genuine, and that was that was the feeling that I got from it. And we, that's and that's why it hurt so bad afterwards. When you we were talking, uh, actually, it was the first time I actually mentioned him. Uh, I think it was Jeff or somebody out there. Uh, we were talking about uh, how Abby was working during COVID, and nobody knew how long uh, we were going to be off. But Abby was in the backyard or at the field working, conditioning, doing full games. Um, she goes, my dad wow. was yelling at me, too. And we were having fun. Wow. And we would throw runners out. And there's nobody there. It was just them, too. Right. Um, but it was nice to see her smile and yeah. reflect back. And, yeah. you know. Well, you know, we, we, it, it's softball, right? But we experienced so many things to, together with people, right? So family situations, that family dynamics change. But uh, there's nothing more powerful than experiencing death, right? And so whatever we can do to supplement the, the, the kids and provide support, whatever, but that, that's, that's always a tough one. So tell me about um, if there's any little young pups in your camps that are just like they light you up every time you see them is the way they're fielding. Who, who, who do we keep our eye on that someday is going to be, hey, you're going to hear about this kid because it's, you know, and it might be in a playing ability or it might be just the fact that she's got a persona that don't be surprised if, you, if we're working for her someday. So <laughs> tell me about a couple of your kids. That wow, where there. do I start? I no. mean, uh, pops in your head first. <laughs> Amrod. Amrod. Uh, she's a 2011 player. It's one of the best in the country. And I can say that defensively, but she hits the crap out of the ball as well. Um, but, yeah, she's a player that – And what do, you, what do you love about her? What's, what's... You know, she's one of those kids that just works hard. And she gets it, and she fails, and she hates the fact, but she keeps getting up, trying it over and over. As a matter of fact, I had her out there. So she's going to be uh, second year 10s next year. But I had her out there yesterday at Tuesday's class with the older girls, uh, 14s, and she's holding her own and just fearless. Uh, but you're going to be seeing a lot of this kid in the future. As a matter of fact, uh, so TJ mm-hmm. and I are going to be coaching this uh, 10U team next year. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to it. But she's one of the players on that team. Nice. Nice. Uh, amazing kids she's just one there's there's tons of kids out there how about you vic anyone stand out in the classes there's a lot (laughs) how about some how about some older players so so older set have went to your classes and they're they're about to head on yeah siani we'll see her tomorrow Mm -hmm. we'll see her this weekend she's a player that first time i went out to hawaii um sakai uh, siani sakai she's from Kauai, but i met her i think it was in uh I don't know if it was Maui the first time we were out there. She flew in, and, and I think she was 11 years old. And in the second year, uh, I think I was doing a camp in Vegas, and she showed up. And she's a baseball player, so she's 12 U out there in Vegas playing a baseball tournament. And uh, we brought her aboard with, uh, with us uh, on our softball team, and she's just amazing. So she's one of those kids where you're going to see. You're going to see. I, I've been getting a lot of calls what, for her. What would you say uh, makes her special? Gosh, she's just that five-tool player with a huge heart, but a great teammate. Just a great teammate. You can hear her out there picking in each other. She's, yeah. Does she have a presence? So she's one of those people that when she walks into the room, Coach Normie would say, when you walk into the room, be the room, right? There's just an air about them. There's an energy about them, right? I remember that when, when they came into the warehouse and she had a, 
a little different presence. Huge about smile. Yeah. But plays the game just like a beast out there. Yeah. And contagious on the field. Oh, yeah. my God. Right? Like Infectious. She, she lights a fire. So, you know, not necessarily a diving play, but just, just her energy out there will spark another one to pick it up, another one picks it up, and then mm-hmm. boom. That's, that's. I remember one day we were having, Vic knows about this story, having trouble with our girls, leaving their feet and diving. So we bring Celia aboard. She's diving left and right. Next thing you know, at the end of the tournament, I don't know how many diving catches from the other players. Just amazing. Just contagious. Mm-hmm. Lead by, leading by example. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Awesome. If I was to ask you guys, here's, here's a little, kind of a – take a turn on this one. And if it, nothing comes up, that's fine. Um, every player hits a point where they think about quitting this game. Every player at some point, sometimes it's early, sometimes it's later. And whether they do or not, it's something that I've experienced that they all they all experience it. Not all of them can talk about it. Not all of them have that, that situation where it comes to the surface. But they all kind of hit that. And, you know, when we're talking to players that are going through rough times, I think it's important to to relate to them that we all have our vulnerable moments. Is there, a, is there a low point for either of you, like either in your coaching or one of those moments? And, and, and it doesn't have to come from anything internally. Could it be just an experience or something that was happening or just it wasn't a good time, good time in your coaching career or anything? But are there any part, parts of your career that stand out as low points that are significant in your overall story? Because without those, you know, you don't, you don't appreciate the high ones as much. But are there, were there any times where it was just really rough for you, just something you contemplated, even you not wanting to do this anymore? I mean, what were... I remember, wow, well, it was USA. Uh, it was Western Nationals in Washington. I was with my older daughter. And um, Desiree was nine at the time, my younger daughter, who's now 21. And... Um, I, I told my older team that, hey, this is it. I'm going to go back down. Uh, I'm going to coach Desiree. I'm going to you know, make sure I do things right. Uh, but my older daughter quit, and I wanted to make sure she didn't love softball anymore, and I think that I had a lot to do with that, so I had to change. So Desiree was nine, and, and I made a commitment to myself that if I'm going to do this and, and Desiree loves the game, I, I have to change. So I looked in the mirror and said, this is what I'm going to do going forward and just made sure. Just, I just want to make sure that she didn't go through what her older sister went through. So, again, it, it started with me. Uh, but I think Des, it was, uh, God, what was she, second year 12s, and I think she was playing up, and uh, she wasn't having fun. And it wasn't me. It was the, the other coach or the team, and maybe it was uh, a little bit more competitive. Uh, so, anyway, she wanted to quit. And I told her uh, not to do that. Uh, let's let's think it out. But she really didn't want to play anymore. So there was another coach uh, that she used to play for, Paul Granado. That said, hey, bring her aboard with us. It was Jinx, a small team out of West Covina, really really good team. And Paul's a great coach. So uh, Paul invited her aboard, uh, and it just kept her in the game. And I, as a matter of fact, I I, I uh, talked to Paul last week, and I said, Des is going to graduate from LMU. And a lot has awesome. to do with you, Paul. So thank you. And he said, you know, you're welcome. That, that, that was third party, right? What was it, Tony, that you knew you had to change? Because this is the part that relates to a couple of dads that don't don't want to hear it directly, but they can listen to another story, another person's story. So what was it about you that you knew you had to change? Well, it wasn't about me. It was about her, and and just listening and understanding where she was coming from. Uh, again, just like our clinics, we allow failure, and if we don't allow that to our players or our own daughters, then they're going to struggle and they're not going to be successful. So um, I just had to make sure that I gave her her time uh, from a tough loss. And, and on that ride home, it, we don't discuss softball, you know. And, uh, and that, that's a learned behavior. That's not absolutely. a natural thing. Because I think we'd agree. No, no. And, and again, I don't want to pick on our dads, right? I told you. I feel like <laughs> we go there. But it's, it's such an important uh, factor in the experience of the young women that we're, we're serving, right? And so, you know, if you if you think about it, there's not a person or a parent or a man that wants to create that feeling for their kids. They're not intentionally doing that. But why does it happen? Where does it come from? Where where does that imbalance come from so that, you know, our, our coaches can at some point recognize that within themselves? Is it something innate? Something Is it a competitiveness that's taken inside of them that they just, you know, they see it only as a bottle of water, but they don't see it as how it's affecting her psyche and her emotions and everything else? Like, where would you guys say it comes from? I think just being a competitor and wanting to win. But at the end of the day, does that mean, uh, you know, if if you come in second, you're not a winner? Right. And it's just understanding that it's it's not always about that trophy. So we're not asking our dads to be less competitive. We're asking them to understand a bigger picture. Absolutely. Because we, sure. can, we can choose somebody out 
on the field after the game in the car and then go home and watch ESPN and just switching channels, not realizing that those words are still going in her head over and over and over. And she feels like she's disappointed dad, which is the worst feeling to yeah. a young woman, right? Yeah. So even, uh, you know, my own daughter, it's all, it's been all about softball. She's always liked to play volleyball, basketball. We got into high school, uh, her freshman year and she played volleyball and then she played basketball and we still had so- softball going on. Um, and to my surprise, it was like after basketball was over, she got MVP for basketball, and I was like, "Whoa, we're 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 grinding here about softball twenty four seven, but here she's getting MVP for softball or basketball, and not a word about so- basketball." <laughs> so it was like for me that was eye opening. It was like, "Yeah." Wait a minute. There's a lot of other stuff that she's doing. She was thriving in a less and, controlled yeah, sport, right? Yeah. Um, so I've I've learned a lesson there, and I've kind of leaned back and like like there's other things that you know we're always grinding softball, but maybe at the end of the day, maybe it's not softball. Maybe it's the guitar she picks up that I hear and she playing in the room when I'm not telling her about are you practicing guitar? Are you do you know? And maybe guitar isn't your thing. Yeah. yeah. But it's her thing. Yeah. Her purpose. Yeah. Right. I mean, being that either a, a rocket scientist or an artist, those are two different worlds. Yeah. Right. But you don't know what your kid's designed to be. Right. right. So just kind of step out of it. It's just, it's just the relatable stories. Like a, yeah. I've mentioned hundreds of times. I, if I'm an alcoholic, I want a sponsor who's been there. And knows the danger of that it could happen tonight, but mm-hmm. not somebody that's never been there that just knows how I'm supposed to be, right? And so that's that's why I bring those things up so that, again, someone listening understands that we're not – it's not a place of judgment. It's not a place of, oh, we're happy and we've created this and that's all it is. But no, it's – it's you've, everyone's got their trials and tribulations. Mm-hmm. But the good news is that you can be. You can be anything. So, um, guys, I think the last thing I want to kind of cover is just – what what's next right so you're hitting the road this weekend heading back to hawaii for the first time in a year or plus you know so much time there or not being there um, but what's next for the medina uh brand what's next for d up like where, where else you heading after hawaii what's on the what's on the tour <laughs> schedule vic and tony what's where, where can we see you you know it's it's crazy because we don't solicit business we don't solicit camps or uh you know we don't put it out there hey if you're interested in having us come to your your town give us a call uh, so, so I don't know, uh, but I know on a weekly basis it's uh, we're going to continue to to grow and develop these players. Um, I know next year I'm looking forward to um, coaching that little ten U team and just having some fun and just watching these kids grow. And uh, hopefully at the end of that journey, you know, good things will happen. But uh, as far as D up, um, uh, I don't know. I got a call from Mexico. Uh, may go there, maybe not. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, you learn some Espanol. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, you know who knows? I don't know. I think I got some gloves coming out. I got the fungo. Um, just trying so to. So tell ha- me about those. You've got. So I, I mean, I'm fortunate enough to. I still love my little black fundo, fungo. You've given me a couple of them, but man, that little black stick is. is a, I love to swing it. But you know, as, as your kids get older, my kids are a little older. Uh, you know, and they're doing their thing. I, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, do some things out there, and just uh, I get bored easily, so I got to stay busy. So one of the things, you know, I, I love swinging the fungo, and I, I love customizing my style, which what, 33 inch, 22 ounce mm-hmm. uh, glove. Same thing, kind of. Uh, I was uh, messaging uh, my contact, my agent uh, from overseas. He's, he sent me a glove. It's a little too small, a training glove. So uh, And what's too small, like 8-inch? Uh, it, nine, it was a 9-inch, uh-huh. but it was a little too small. So um, working on that. So you'll see some gloves coming out soon. Right. And, and part of your class is always to remember the, the simplicity of just – ball against the wall right like just there's there's it doesn't have to be training does not have to be expensive right no, no. you know what, what's crazy too is we talk about uh analogies and and uh, uh the karate kid right I remember daniel son wants to go out there and mm-hmm. fight and mm-hmm. mr miyagi said hey we're gonna do this and daniel son's like no 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 i want to get out there and same thing with us you know mm-hmm. hey we're gonna work on some quick hands well i want to do double plays trust me work on your hands short hops foot you know your feet and um and different balls Right, different balls that's to right. show them sure. that that's right. they can use a tennis ball, a baseball, a dimple ball, softball, different size softball, and then we also explain to them at home. Uh, you can do all this at home. Here's some drills to do at home with you know whatever ball. It's all muscle memory, and and it's cool because we get videos sent to us all the time on social media. Uh, girls across the nation doing their own workouts, their own yeah. drills. 
Uh, Isn't that rewarding, right? Yeah. They, they didn't need to buy something really expensive or this or that or, <laughs> Love it. you know, but they're able to provide something. I think mm-hmm. that's powerful instruction when they don't have to be necessarily in your company or in your presence. Obviously, that's a great experience, but they're able to take something and then improve their skills with it, right? Yeah. Love yeah. it. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. So, Vic, I mean, you, you provide a lot of the structure to it, too. So do you have anything in store for him that yeah, so he doesn't know the, about? Or? No, but for the, the Firecrackers Medina umbrella, uh, I, I do want to share a little story about that. Because when we came over to the Firecrackers, um, you know, we had we had one or two teams that we've been really close with. And uh, we had no intentions of this being uh, 10 teams now. I think we're at 10 or something. And the calls, the emails to Tony right now. Um, or, I mean, almost weekly, he's getting calls from other coaches like, you know, how is it being a firecracker? How can we come to your umbrella? Um, so there, there's some good stuff going on out there, you know, whether it's from our, our, our Medina teams we have now or whether it's from the girls at the clinics. You know, a lot of people also ask Tony, you know, how, how are you putting these teams together? Um, a lot because of the, they're used to people acquiring and pulling yes, people in, but yes, no, not the story. These girls are coming because – a lot of them go to the clinics, and they've been asking maybe for years, how do we get on a Medina team? Um, and, and a lot of our girls have come from the clinics. Um, and we tell these coaches that because they're like, oh, man, I'm struggling. I can't, you know, I'm looking for, like, four more players. Can you help us out? And, you know, we don't, we don't have this, you know, database of players that we're just going to call and get <laughs> right. on your team. Right. But we tell them, like, you know, come out, come out and help with the clinics that's where you get a first look at some of these girls sure. and build a relationship, learn, meet their parents. You know, a lot of the parents help out at the clinics here and there. You know, we got the dads c- catching balls at first or, you know, that, that's one thing that, that Tony offers to a lot of the parents or the other coaches is the chance to jump on the field and learn some of these sure. drills. Liza gets out there on Thursday. Yeah. And these kids I'm love Liza. Big Liza yeah. fan. Yeah. Yeah. She's she's doing amazing. She's gonna come aboard. She and doesn't help us miss out. a meeting, I don't think, on our on our weekly call. She's got her kids <laughs> in her lap and everything not. else. She's got she's amazing. Yeah. And that sidearm drill that you showed me with her throwing, I was like, skills. She's got her own bat and training bat coming out too now. Get out of here. Yeah, so look out for that. So how good does that feel though? So kidding, it's about empowering people, right? Mm-hmm. And and allowing them who Whatever the end game is, right? But that that just something like that makes me so happy. Because there's me so too. many people that want would love to, but now we're doing it, Yeah, right? So really pretty cool stuff. I think that's a good point that you brought up, Vic, that create something that people want to be part of. You'd be amazed at what what can come as a result of that. Back yeah. when I believe it was Pen, Ben Pasco uh, that uh, I had been turning people down uh, mid-2000s, you know, hey, let's join the firecrackers. No, nah, I'm good. You know, it's classic. No, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. And Ben asked me, he goes, he just brought it up one day, and I, I shot him down too. I was, just, I was just really good at shooting things down. I'm good. I'm good, bro. But I, I went home. I've told this story before. I think it's on the history video. that I went home thinking, why did I say no to Ben? Is it because he doesn't win? Like, is it because he's not, there's not a – and it really, really wasn't. I just was asking myself that question, and I realized that, man, he's a really good man. It's and his. that I would want to work with someone like that. And then, well, wait a minute. If we can take this stage – and provide enough room on it so someone else can have a little success. And so, you know, guys, that was, that was 12, 15 years ago, something like that. I don't know. It was a long time ago. But to see what Sean Brashear has done, to see what you guys are doing. And you mentioned this, Tony. It's the collaboration. It's not, it's not all us. It's not mm-hmm. all you. It's, it's, it's really that synergy and, and putting things together. But it makes me so happy that your, your talent and – and the brand can come to more of a fruition, you know, through this stuff kind of coming together. And guys, we're not done. Like, there's so many people that I, you know, I want you to be able to empower more Eliza's, more teams, more coaches, more anything. I mean, where's where is the end of this? I don't think there is. I think there mm-hmm. the possibilities that the end is are going to be our lives. You know, that that's the <laughs> that's the, going to be the physical limit. But just I can't thank you guys enough for what you brought to the firecrackers. But. I know that you know the importance of how the firecrackers care about you as people. We care about you and what you're doing with your individual brand, with D-Up, your own personal success. You know, Vic, you're in here now spending some time in the office and kind of helping us with try to get our social media off the ground. And it's, it's not about the end game of the views. There's goals and stuff. 
but it's really about just the process. So, yeah. guys, keep up the great work. You know, we'll get you back in here. And as I mentioned to you before, I want your people to to look forward to a Tony and Vic, a half hour, hour, kind of once a month, something on what's happening with your brand and t- tell people what's going on. You know, bring some of your students, some of your coaches kind of in. So, oh, awesome. you know, we've got room at the table. But, you know, I want to hear more of your story. I want to take myself out of the picture. And I'd love to be able to watch just on my TV back in my office. And so <laughs> looking forward to that. So be ready for that, you guys. Right. And then anything that you got for me, any ideas, Tony, this or that, what if you do this? I'm all ears because, again, I, how, how am I not going to learn from the great stuff that you guys are doing? So appreciate you guys being in the studio today, our second official guests, right? <laughs> and then just have a great time this uh, this weekend in Hawaii and uh, say hi to Jay and all the girls for me, too. I was really lucky that I got a chance to meet them. So Sounds appreciate good. you guys you being in, okay? Thank you for everything, Thanks, too. Thank you. Thank you.